So what is a possible's bag? If you guys think of the mountain men of the you know late 1700s, early 1800s, or even go back to Lewis and Clark, or look at enlisted soldiers in that same era, or uh, you can even come up into modern times, uh, people that are out doing the things are going to have a bag on them that they're going to store all that stuff that they need to have immediately available to them. In the old days, they would make them out of leather. They would typically carry things in there like flint and steel, maybe a pipe with some tobacco, eating utensils, shooting supplies like their powder measure patches, balls, and extra flints. Maybe even like they would have their powder horn attached to it. And sometimes they'd have a patch knife, you know, on the strap or other items to trade, like uh, which would have been the currency back then. They keep that all in what they call their possibles bag. Their possibles being their their personal items. Now, if you had a time machine and you could go back and get Jeremiah Johnson or Lewis and Clark and bring them into the future and ask them, hey, what equipment, if you could bring something from the future back with them, uh, what would they carry? Well, they would probably have the same general ideas. There have been upgrades in technology and materials that can make these things stronger and lighter and uh, more resistant to decomposition and water. And with modern firearms, you'd have much the same things all contained in metallic cartridges. You wouldn't need to have all your ball and powder stuff. That would all be contained in your cartridges. So they'd probably grab something very close to what like your modern fur traders are using now. There are still people that go out there and chase down fur-bearing critters and trade fur. We're simply using more modern equipment today. And likewise, if you look at the Minutemen of the 1700s, uh, most of your people today who are new to the firearms community are kind of along those lines. That's one of the reasons they got into it is because they want to be ready at a moment's notice in case duty calls. God forbid that if at some point in the future they would need to respond to defend the country. And what's the best way to kind of get what you really need in something that's easy to grab and go? So as for me and my uses, uh, I have a lot of different ways of managing my ammo and my possibles, which would include like uh, IFAC, which is, you know, your first aid, your individual first aid kit, or like a bottle of water, maybe some basic sustainment stuff, a knife, a, a cigarette lighter, maybe some, you know, flint and steel that got some magnesium strips, stuff like that, plastic bag, whatever, you know, whatever you're going to have as your uh, sustainment items along with your ammunition for your go-to rifle. I remember being a kid, and if I was going to go take the rifle out in the truck and go and chase down some fur bearers, you'd have to kind of walk around and gather all your stuff. You'd forget half of it, and it's nice to have everything you need for a particular rifle in one bag. So for each different rifle you have that is a go-to rifle, something you use all the time, I think it's a good idea to have everything you need to manage that along with the basics you'll need. You can throw some jerky in there. You can throw some water in there, uh, some iodine tablets for water in case you need to, you know, get some water if you were to get stranded. But everything's in one bag. You can just grab the rifle and the bag, and in one trip you know everything is in there because that's typically where you're going to keep it. That's a very good way to travel. There are different systems for different applications. Some people might look at a possibles bag or the modern version of it here, which I actually really like this one. We'll get into that in a minute. But a lot of people are going to look at the possibles bag as being too slow. But if you consider these things from maybe the myopic loop of CQB only or like SRT teams type stuff, like if you're uh, kicking doors or if you're doing three gun, you're going to have a specific setup for those type of applications. For most utilitarian or hunting or even Minuteman applications, just a standard bag is probably the most adaptable, simple, streamlined, and low-profile way to go. There are a lot of advantages to having a very simple design over something that's more high-profile, that's going to grab the attention more, that's very, very specific. You can retrofit a possibles bag to carry anything you want, really, if you want to switch things around or... If you have different priorities, you can, it's very modular to suit those needs. Over the years, I've had a, a variety of different versions for various rifles. When I was doing my long range stuff as a young man, I would have an old gas mask bag and I would just throw um, like 100 rounds of ammunition in there and have some pruning shears to get rid of some uh, brush for if I was building a hide up in the woods. I'd have a tow support and a canteen. Nowadays, there are some specifically made items that are nice. I've had a variety of them. A lot of them are made in China and they work fine. Um, but if you guys are looking for something that's actually kind of classy, kind of nice, made all in America, I know a lot of guys here really, really like to support American-made companies. Uh, this is a really good option. This is made by Sojourn Gear. They make 
a lot of other components for other companies. They contract out and they make really good stuff. This particular bag made by Sojourn Gear is designed to carry three standard capacity rifle magazines. It'll fit AR-15 mags. It'll fit your SR-25 mags, your AR-10 stuff. It'll fit Kalashnikov mags, or if you want to put 10-22 mags in there, whatever you want to use, it'll work fine. You got a Velcro insert with a pretty heavy-duty elastic-type magazine holder, which uh, Velcros into the inside of the bag, which is actually kind of nice. You can get it out of the way if you don't need it. You can reposition it if you want to change the angle a little bit. Or if you've got a really, really tightly fitting magazine, you can just pull it out and then load your magazines into it and then put it back in. It is specifically designed with the dimensions to carry an IFAC and a bottle of water. There's actually a separate pouch for the bottle of water. There's a little retention uh, pull string on top. You just pull that and tighten it down, cinch it down, and your bottle of water is not going to come loose. It also has a shoulder strap that's pretty comfortable, and it has a retention strap, which is really nice. It folds up real compact if you're not using it, but if you need to deploy that to attach to the, the girth of your body, you can actually do movement. You can run, you can lay prone, you can, uh, can move around quickly, and it'll attach that bag so it's not flopping all over your body. It stays in place. This is something easy. You can throw it in the car next to you, next to your rifle. You have everything you need if you have to bail out of the car with the rifle. If you get it in a color like I did, in a coyote tan or something like that, it's relatively low profile. You can carry this around and not gain a lot of attention. Uh, you know, there are different ways to covertly transport your, your carbine too if you're in an area that would need you to do that. They also have these bags available in multi-cam. They have them in the 1981 woodland pattern style camouflage. I think they have them in ranger green and black and a few other colors you can check on the website for anyone that's familiar with the tibor source rex channel i can tell you that sojourn gear is a good company it's a small company the gentleman who makes these bags is definitely not rich by any means uh, he's a good guy he's one of us in my bag i carry a small sustainment kit in addition to my water bottle my mags and my ifac i would recommend cinching that down with maybe a small piece of bungee cord you can tie that to the bottom inside the pouch uh, uh, to where the magazines slide into that's so if you're laying prone and you got the flap open because you're moving around and, and changing magazines, your stuff is not going to fall on the ground. One more recommendation I would make note of is I think that this is designed for pretty in shape guys. Uh, if you have a big girth, you're going to want to let Sojourn Gear know if you're a bigger size what that size is. So you can type in the comments here when you make your order like any other comments and you can tell them, hey, I'm a big guy. You need to make this so many inches so that it can cover me and also anticipate wearing winter clothes as well. That can increase your girth quite a bit if you're because this bag is designed to be carried on the outside. So if you're above what I would call a large size or if you're extra large or larger, then you're going to want to bring that to his attention so he can make sure he gets a custom strap for you. I know sometimes it's attractive to see a, a bag with a lot more stuff on it or a lot more tactical styled features. However, if you talk to professionals who have done a variety of different types of work all around the world, um, they're going to want to keep it relatively simple because simple is flexible. It can be used for many different things. This was actually designed in conjunction with Pastor Joe Fox, who is a special forces major, I believe, when he got out. So he's got a lot of experience in that field. And this is kind of what they came up with. So keep it high speed, low drag, simple, and low profile. That's a good way to travel. So if this is something that you're looking for, Sojourn Gear is a great outfit run by a great dude, and go check it out online. Tell them Rex said howdy, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.